standard deviation a very very important term to what extent there is a movement of the data now let us try to understand each one of this in detail r is equal to l minus s data can be either in ascending order or descending order average itself is equal to a mean or to the median it's a very very simple exercise because we assume certain values and then we try to deviate good morning and welcome to the first session on chapter 6 measures of dispersion now this chapter is very very important because this is in continuation with chapter 5 where we are going to use some statistical tools in order to understand the meaning of economics, the application of economics in much more clear manner. So moving forward, let's just see what are the topics that we are going to cover today. The topics that we are going to cover is the introduction, we move to the measures of dispersion, range, quartile deviation, mean deviation, standard deviation, a very, very important term and the most important part of statistical application. And then we are going to use the calculation for standard deviation using for ungrouped data. So in the entire concept altogether, if you look into the topics, we are going to cover some new areas like quartile, mean, which you have already seen in the previous chapter. But then standard deviation is going to be an addition to all the learning in terms of what we have done in the previous chapter. So now moving forward, the introduction part, we are going to take the introduction in a very different manner. Why? Because in this chapter, you are going to study those measures which seek to quantify variability of the data. Now this word itself, quantifying variability, the word data, as all we know that, it is more about information, different types of information. Now, when you're going to quantify a data's variability, which means data can vary. The first thing itself that we want to give here is that the data function or the data value can vary. So at any given point of time, when data is varying, there is a quantification, there's an ideology, there's a method to enter it. So that's where we start go about quantifying the variability of data. Now dispersion is the extent to which values in a distribution differ from the average of the distribution that has been given. Now this is very, very important extent to which values in a distribution will move from the average of the distribution. Now, for example, when we were studying about the factors like the marks of a student in a class, or we are trying to understand the speed of a vehicle or the movement of people, there's always this function called as the average. So from the average, to what extent the variability is there, that is what is going to be measured by the word dispersion. The word dispersion itself means to disperse. That means the way it is thrown away from the average. So please keep in mind this word dispersion has got a very, very important meaning in statistics. It tries to tell us to what extent there is a movement of the data from the average. That is from the center point. Now moving forward. Measures of dispersion, what are the factors through which you are going to measure the dispersion? We are going to start with range, we are going to go into quartile deviation, we are going to talk about mean deviation, we are also going to talk about standard deviation. So the word that you can start seeing here is that the deviation, the word deviation itself is very very important. That means I am going to deviate from the average. If the average is here, I am going to deviate from from here, I'm going to try to understand how far the data is deviating, how far the data is moving away from the average. So everywhere, we are going to use this word deviation and we are going to see the value, the means, the understanding of statistical application in economics. Now let us try to understand each one of this in detail. Moving forward, range. 
Range is the difference between largest and the smallest value in a distribution. So what is the formula? R is equal to L minus S. So the largest and the smallest value. Now let's say the largest value in a distribution was 150 and the smallest value in the distribution was 50. So when we do this 150 minus 50 the value stands at 100. So now that is what we are going to understand the range which means to say that under a specific coverage area. So the range of the data is moving at a particular average at moving at a particular speed or at a particular range altogether at a particular variation altogether. So the data can be calculated from the largest minus the smallest. So that is why the range formula is given by R is equal equal to L minus S where L stands for the largest S stands for the smallest so that is the way how we are going to calculate the range moving forward now we are going to talk about a very very important concept and that is called as the quartile deviation the word quartile itself as I have told you in the previous classes and we have also seen this meaning Quartile means in quarters, in the values of 4. So let us try to understand what is this quartile deviation. The presence of even one extremely high or low value in that of a distribution can reduce the utility of a range as a measure of dispersion. So here let us first try to understand the sentence and its meaning. The presence of even one extremely high or low value in a distribution normally what happens is that when you look into a data you try to figure out the values which are closely related they are either in a particular trend or they follow a particular pattern so for example if a data can be either in ascending order or descending order or they have some patterns altogether but there are times when you will find that one data is trying to disturb the entire set. Now for example, in a class test, let's say that one student alone got 100 on 100, whereas the entire class was able to score only 40 marks. So because of that one person, the average will definitely have an implication. So that is what we are trying to say here, the presence of one extreme value either on the positive side or on the negative side can have a measurement, a deviation and that's what the dispersion can happen over the range. Now, the second case, in such situation, if their entire data is divided into four equal parts. Now, I'm going to divide the entire data. Let's say that I have a data of 20 numbers. I'm going to divide it by four, which means I'm going to take it in the set of five. Five into four is 20. Four equal parts, each giving an important weightage of 25 percentage of the values. We get the values of quartiles and the median. Now, what I'm trying to do is that in order to stop the confusion, in order to avoid the confusion, I'm going to divide the entire data set in the sets of four and I'm going to measure the quartile value and the median. The upper and lower quartiles, let's say Q3 and Q1 respectively, are used to calculate the quartile range. So now I will be able to know the upper range and the lower range. I keep the upper range as Q3 and the lower range as Q1. So Q3 minus Q1 will give me the answer at any given point of time. So that is what is very, very important here. Interquartile range. This is more and more important for us. Why? Because it's based on the middle 50% of the value. So as I've told you, when you look at a graph like this, you will see that the middle value, that is the middle 50%, that's the most important thing because that's the key data. That's the central part of the distribution and therefore it is not affected by the extreme values. Normally, when you see the data which are closer to the mid-range or to the middle value, they are not affected by the extremes here. 
what gets affected by the extremes are only data which are either on the first 25% or on the last 25%. So that is why we say that the interquartile deviation, that means where the majority of data is located, the 50%, the majority chunk of data is located, they are not affected by the extreme ends. So that is why half of the interquartile range is called as the quartile deviation. So this factor, the half of that, we will keep it as the center point, as the deviation point and from there we will see that how far the data is being dispersed. So that is why the importance of quartile deviation is very very necessary when it comes to the economic applications. Moving forward, mean deviation, we have heard about mean in the previous chapter, we tried to understand mean saying that it tries to get us the average value. Here, mean deviation is the appropriate statistical tool to estimate the average. Absolutely no doubts on that. Why? Because in the last chapter also we had seen that x bar, which is the arithmetic mean, is equal to summation of x divided by n. That means the sum of all the values divided by the total number of observations altogether. So definitely when we talk about mean deviation, that's the most appropriate statistical tool which is used to estimate the average. So if I want to find out the average of any given set of data, the first thing that will come to my mind is mean deviation. So I would use the word mean or the arithmetic mean altogether. This is an arithmetic mean differences of values of their average. Now when I move slightly from arithmetic mean to that of mean deviation, I'm talking about movement of averages. So that is why I am writing it here very clearly, arithmetic mean of differences of the values of their average. So when I continuously get moving averages, sets of data which have different averages, there might be a mean deviation that can be found. The average is either use the arithmetic mean or median. Normally, when I use the word mean or the average here, they are trying to indicate either the mean value or the median value. So average itself will equal to a mean or to the median. That's what we are trying to understand in the mean deviation factor altogether. Now, moving forward, standard deviation. Now standard deviation, the word itself has got some meaning, has got some standard factor altogether. That's why it's a positive square root of the mean square divisions from the mean. Now why do we take a standard deviation? Now there is always when you understand the word called as process in the management in any of the economic terms. Now there is always a value that on which a process is based. Now whenever you are doing a manufacturing process, whenever you are doing some processing in terms of productions or something, there is always a value. So you say that this standard value or a standard output has to be achieved. So when there is a deviation from that factor, let's say we are measuring the quality of the output. So if there is a deviation from the standard output or the standard measurement of quality, we want to find it out and we want to square it off as soon as possible. So that's where we are going to get into the standard deviation, which is a positive square of the mean of squared divisions from the mean. So for example, if there are values like x1, x2, x3, and x4, and x5, let's say five values, first their mean is calculated. So it's quite simple. What I will do is x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5. So I will take all the five values divided by five. So I will get the mean. It's quite simple. Now I would have got the arithmetic mean. Then the deviations of their value from the mean are calculated. So let's say that each one of this value x1 or x2 all will have a deviation from their mean value. So we are going to calculate that deviation value. These deviations are squared. So let's say that each one of these deviations we get a value value like 1, 2, 3, whatever are the values. So I'm going to square it off. So I'm going to just put a square for these values. So I will get a corresponding value there. 
द मीन ऑफ द स्क्वायर डिविएशन अगेन द मीन वैल्यू ऑफ द स्क्वायर डिविएशन इज द वेरियंस सो दैट इज द वेरियंस फैक्टर positive square root of that variance so let us say that after getting the mean value i get the square root of 49 so this is my variance the square root of 49 which is equal to 7 is the standard deviation so that is how we try to understand the standard deviation process it's a very very simple exercise it's a very very easy method also and a scoring perspective so all we have to do is that first find out the mean square out the deviations factor and then you need to see the variance from the variance we will be able to calculate the standard deviation altogether so it's a quite simple and yet an effective process altogether now moving forward we have the calculation of standard deviation on ungrouped data so we have certain methods here the actual mean method as we were talking about which is the usage of the arithmetic mean assumed mean method where we are going to use this alphabet a which is going to be an assumed mean because we assume certain values and then we try to deviate that value altogether then we have a direct method now that is something very very simple take put on the formula and you will be able to get and a step deviation method which is again where we are going to take it in different steps in different format and then start finding out the value so if you start understanding standard deviation as a factor in statistics this is the most important component or rather the important tool that will help you to understand the averages and the meaning of the averages because when you start deviating from a particular value there is some differences there are some factors which is causing this altogether so for any industry for any of the institution standard deviation will follow or will frame a very very important statistical tool even while calculating our gdp we do use this factor called as standard deviations and those methods because that will help us to understand where we are deviating from the normal track altogether so with this we try to come to the conclusion of today's session Thank you for joining me on this wonderful session. I hope and believe that the session was interesting, informative and educative altogether. In the next session, we will be seeing about the problems in standard deviation using those different methods. I hope and believe that this session would have definitely added some value to you. Until the next session, please stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today.